Hey guys, Game.Film here, back with another video. So one of my recent videos, I found out about a closing video rental store in Oakland, California. I exchanged some emails, talked to the guy on the phone, got about a dozen movies. But just by chance, I was able to take a vacation to San Francisco Bay Area near Oakland. So I took the BART train to get more stuff, guys. See, meet the guy in person. And I've got 15 films to talk about that I picked up. Let's get into it. All right, first pickup I want to talk about is China Strike Force, starring Aaron Kwok, huge canto pop singer, huge Hong Kong actor, star um, Coolio. Can you believe it? Coolio's in this. And Mark Dacascos, great action star, great martial artist. But Stanley Tong, man, when I saw the director of Rumble in the Bronx and Super Cop, man, I had to pick this up. This has got to be good, man. And Mark Dacascos, I think he plays the villain in this. He usually plays good guys, so that's going to be a real treat. Haven't seen this one before. This is going to be a first. Next up is Godzilla. I'm going to butcher this one. Godzilla vs. Mega Guerus. Godzilla vs. Mega Guerus. I think this was from the year 2000, and Toho Pictures was in on this one. I think they tried, they tried to put Godzilla into a black hole, but it backfires, and <laughs> a dragonfly... Mega Guerus, um, a bunch of little ones pop out, and then there's like a big queen, you know. So, hey man, creature feature kaiju, it looks pretty gnarly. This will be a first time watch as well. Got Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla 2. I have seen the first one, I think that one was from 2003. This one was released in 2005. Let's get a shot of that back there. But yeah, man, I really enjoyed the first one, I think I gave it three and a half stars out of five but um i'm not familiar with the directors and stars but hey man this looks like more of the same from the first film so i am excited for that one next pickup goyokin so when i saw this was directed by hideo gosha i had recently watched samurai wolf and i wasn't blown away but i was really his action choreography his camera work camera style really caught my eyes so when I saw, I was like, Goyoka and Hideo Go Gosha? Okay, okay, I gotta get this one in. Film Buddies told me that this one is kind of rare. People were high-fiving me when they I was posting this to Twitter. They are like, dude, that was a great find. Good physical copy there. So, Also stars Tatsuya Nakadai. He was a star of Ran. So, yeah, man. Looks like uh, sword fights in the snow. Samurai stuff. So, I think I scored on that one. That's one of my better pickups. Samaritan Girl, a film by Kim Ki Duck. So I've seen a few of his films, guys, and after you finish his, it's like one and done. You're only gonna watch that movie once. You feel pretty. You don't feel like depressed, but you're like, damn, that that really hit hit home there. So her, this is kind of the same though. Okay, so I haven't seen Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter. Uh, that's like his best movie. So. But I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen so far from him. Samaritan Girl, A Dark Tale of Revenge. So, bam, got another one there. Got a Korean horror movie called Phone. This is directed by Ahn byung Ki. She does a lot of movies on Letterboxd that are not reviewed much. So, I'm hoping to dive deep into her filmography. Maybe there's some hidden gems in there, right? Not many people have seen this one. Not many reviews. But hey, man, I think it's like uh, kind of like the ring with flip phones. <laughs> um, like you answer the phone, you're about to die or something like that. So yeah, man, phone, Korean horror, early 2000s. So definitely down for some Korean horror, guys. So next up from Korea, this is a thriller, maybe a horror. It's called Say Yes. This is another one when I got on Letterboxd, right? There was barely any reviews from this. Not many people have watched this one. I'm always down for Korean horror, but the back of this film describes it as The Hitcher meets Cape Fear. Um, two people in love pick up a hitchhiker, he starts getting weirder and weirder, shit hits the fan. So I love The Hitcher, guys. So if this is a Korean spin on The Hitcher, I'm down. Say yes from Korea. Next up, we've got The Foul King, starring a baby, Song Kong Ho. This is a, uh, not a dark comedy, but dreamy a drama comedy, but 
Sung Kong Ho. He plays like a lousy bank clerk and he decides to become a wrestler. And he's kind of, he takes it up, man. And he's pretty entertaining. Very funny from what I remember. It's been like six years since I've seen it. But um, I went through a phase in middle school where I watched wrestling for like a year or two. So I wouldn't, I don't mind a, a wrestling movie, you know? It's entertaining. I like the stunt work. So yeah, man, Song Kong Ho when he's young. The Foul King, bam. This is a good physical copy to have. I heard I scored on that one as well. So next up, another Korean movie, Liberami. So if I've seen parts of Backdraft, the Ron Howard American film with Kurt Russell, and it was pretty decent, good action, survival type of movie. But this is kind of their spin on Backdraft, as you can tell. They're trying to brag about it on the front there. Choi min Su, Yu ji and yeah, man, I mean, early 2000s, um, I don't see many, you see so many police procedurals, right? But what about a fireman procedural? I'd like to see how they handle disasters and stuff. Korean disaster movie, Liberami. All right, next up, guys, got another Korean film here called Paradise Villa. Another film on Letterboxd and IMDb that's just not been watched enough. Uh, not many people know about this one. But basically this guy is like, he he plays like in an online virtual reality world. He built up his character but somebody hacked it and just like deleted everything. And this guy is super pissed and he goes to track down the guy that deleted all his stuff. Shit, it's the fan from there. So this could be a good one. I don't know much else about it so next up Jackie Chan my stunts this is a film that I was able to watch I haven't watched much from this stack y'all but this is an outstanding documentary from 1999 it makes you want to like get a camera and start filming action scenes with your buddies it's so good he goes into like such good detail on how to how he films action scenes he has his whole stunt crew team with him and his whole training grounds and stuff they practice with and it also obviously has clips from his movies um just bone cr the most bone crunching stunts it shows like highlights clips from his past movies right but man four and a half stars out of five guys i heard this physical copy is pretty hard to find so i scored on this one so but yeah may or may not be available for streaming but if it is definitely watch it okay too Well DK, Japanese film. So this is another one I, I was able to watch, but dude, I'll tell you, I fell asleep twice trying to watch this. I was expecting like all out action because that's kind of how the back describes it, the front describes it, a duel to the death, right? But like, yeah, um, it takes a while for the action to start happening. And, but I did like it. I gave it three stars out of five still because there's really um like guerrilla filmmaking going on there's some cool camera angles but i do like the bickering between the two roommates man they're battling to be a star in the same movie and they keep insulting each other throwing jabs at each other and like the tension builds and builds and builds and although it's a little boring to start guys it's only 70 minutes the payoff's pretty good definitely some solid violence and good choreography 2ldk yo Next pickup is Champion. This is about a, a true story about a Korean boxer, I believe. But um, I love boxing movies, guys, because like I like editing, and it's very difficult to film and edit a boxing scene because it's, you know, you got to throw all these punches right, and you got to cut like to show like how much the impact is and make it look convincing. So I like boxing movies and watching how they're filmed. So this one hasn't been watched much on IMDb and Letterbox. So I think the main actor is the star of Chingu, aka Friend. It's one of the first great Korean gangster movies, so hey, excited to watch a boxing movie. From Korea, at least. Second to last pickup, guys. My wife is a gangster. I saw this about six or seven years ago. So she's like a mob boss, and she finds out her sister has terminal cancer. And her sister's like, dude, you gotta settle down, get married chill the fuck out and she's like man okay i'll go straight for you but it's like of course you know things aren't that easy in the mobster world right but um i remember it having a good amount of comedy pretty well done action so i'm down to revisit this one my wife is a gangster this one is actually um i think i get two discs in here huh yeah i do look at that man 
Bam. Got a little leaflet too. Nice. All right, last pickup, y'all. Donnie Yen, Fist of the Red Dragon. This is directed by one of the goats, Win Wu Ping. He did the action choreography on the Matrix films, but before that, legendary director, legendary action choreographer, stunt choreographer, martial arts choreographer, and it stars Donnie Yen, man. That's like a match made in heaven, those two. But um, I kind of cheated a little bit, looked at reviews on Letterboxd. Um, this is not one of their best uh, creations, one of their best films, but definitely has it's Donnie Yen, man, Wen Wu Ping. There's got to be some good action, right? It might just lag or something in the middle. One of those, but yeah. Bam. Fist of the Red Dragon. So what do you guys think? Uh, have you watched any of these? Let me know in the comments. Now, don't forget to like this video, sub to the channel, and let this video play in its entirety. It really helps out that brutal YouTube algorithm. I'm currently shadow banned, so it'll really help me out but um all right thank you for watching and i'll be here for the next one peace